I, I'd like to shift gears for a second. In your book, uh, com, uh, your new book, Come Home America, you have a section on the American military where you say the American military is possibly the greatest threat to the peace and security of the American people. Uh, yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, that's a pretty heavy accusation, and I didn't come there to just be provocative. I, I looked around the world and, and described in the, a couple of chapters our national, our quote, national defense strategy, which is really a strategy of offense. It's deploying forces, weaponry, uh, secret agents and called Green Berets and others, as far forward as we can get them, surrounding other countries that we deem to be hostile, starting with China, Russia, and a bunch of others, and then intruding in countries with, uh, with the special forces and other means to, to first try to bump off people whom we again regard, we've decided they're dangerous jihadists or whatever they're called, and, and what this sets up are tripwires planted by our government around the world, which some other party, a foreign country or small insurgencies in other countries, can step across and start the next war. So the question I ask is, where's the next war? And, and that's what I mean by the greatest threat. And that's before I've gotten to nuclear uh, deployments, which have a similar effect. Uh, this is, I know this is deeply offensive to most Americans. Uh, they don't, either don't know the facts of the situation or they cannot believe that their own government is actually risking war by the way it's running our so-called national defense. But, and I, I can't say I was, I would have said this 20 years ago, but now the Cold War is gone. All of the old reasons for why we're doing these deployments evaporated 15 years ago, and yet they're still advancing. I, I want to add that I think President Obama is, is opening the door a little bit with his, with his rhetorical positions. He wants to move out of some of that stuff. Unfortunately, in the, if you look at the reality, um, He's not exactly withdrawing. He, in, in Afghanistan, we know the opposite is occurring. In Pakistan, I will mention also Africa. The, the, the Bush administration founded an AFRICOM, which is an African command. What is that for? It's to run U.S. military operations, both public and clandestine, in Africa. What's that about? Well, it's allegedly about finding Muslims who are dangerous and taking them out, but it's also about oil because the focus is always in, seems to turn up in countries that have um, a lot of oil or at least potential. And here's the contest. China is in Africa as well for making oil contracts and so forth and so on. China goes with development capital and literally builds projects for poor countries in Africa and says, we'll help you with this and that. In your, in your society. So it, it is literally the case, as I say in the book, China sends capital, the United States sends Green Berets. We just have 30 seconds, but the piece in the Times today about Senator Schumer introducing a middle ground on health care, quote, unquote, uh, a, a government-run insurance program to comply with all the rules and standards that apply to private insurance. Today, the Senate Finance Committee will start to look at ways to expand health yeah, coverage. Yeah. It's another example of, of, of what I've been saying. We'll find out this year whether the Democratic Party is real or not, and they have, they have nowhere to hide. But this proposal, if I understand it correctly, is a way to back out of what both Obama and the party people have been saying for years. You give us power, and we'll create a real health care system. Now, the, the less moderate version of that actually makes a lot of sense. Medicare for all. If, if, if the private insurance companies won't insure the people who are actually sick and won't give honest and affordable coverage, then the government will step in and offer an alternative, virtually like Medicare for people who are under 65. Made sense to me. It's not the ideal solution, but it's a, it's a step on the right road. Now this Schumer 
plan says, well, it's not going to be like Medicare, actually. We're going to enshrine it in rules and regulations and pin it down in different ways so that it'll be sort of just like your private insurance plans. Well, what's the point of doing that? I mean, if, you, if, if you're not going to create a public plan which has real virtues and competitive advantages that people can go to when they're getting screwed by the private insurance holders, uh, issuers, um, we don't need it. You've got to, you see what I'm getting at. This, and this will be fought over small print and large print, and I think the roll calls will unfold in the next six months as they develop. I haven't given up on the Democrats. I'm just saying, and I'm always hopeful, but, but the early signs are, are, are getting ominous that these guys think they can fog it past the public again. I think they're mistaken about that. William Grider, we want to thank you for being with us. His new book is called Come Home, America, The Rise and Fall and Redeeming Promise of Our Country. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you.